Hi, I'm in Recovering Biblical Manhood and Womanhood, a Response to Evangelical Feminism, edited by John Piper and Wayne Grudem. The chapter I'm in right now is written by Wayne Grudem. It's chapter 10 of the book, Wives Like Sarah and the Husbands Who Honor Them. And he's uh, discussing the text from 1 Peter 3, 1 to 7, which he has uh, quoted right under the title here. So I'll read it. It's from the NIV translation. Wives, in the same way, be submissive to your husbands, so that if any of them do not believe the word, they may be won over without words, by the behavior of their wives, when they see the purity and reverence of your lives. Your beauty should not come from outward adornment, such as braided hair and the wearing of gold jewelry and fine clothes. Instead, it should be that of your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. For this is the way the holy women of the past, who put their hope in God, used to make themselves beautiful. They were submissive to their own husbands, like Sarah, who obeyed Abraham and called him her master. You are her daughters if you do what is right, and do not give way to fear. Husbands, in the same way, be considerate as you live with your wives, and treat them with respect as the weaker partner, and as heirs with you of the gracious gift of life, so that nothing will hinder your prayers. Then he, uh, Grudem makes this comment, This is a magnificent text for understanding God's plan for an ideal marriage. In a few verses, Peter describes the complementary responsibilities of husbands and wives and guards against common abuses. Now, the way uh, he has divided the material into what submission does not mean and what submission does mean. So today, we're going to look at what submission does not mean. Uh, it says, uh, while Peter tells wives to be submissive to their husbands, the text also gives several indications of what submission does not mean. So here are just a few that he presents. Submission does not mean giving up independent thought. Peter speaks directly to wives, not to the husbands so that they can tell their wives what he says. Peter assumes that they will hear, ponder, understand, and respond to God's word themselves. Moreover, Peter knows that some wives have chosen Christ, even though their husbands have not. And this was good for them to do. They have thought the matter through and departed from their husband's way of thinking, on this issue of supreme importance in life. Another, what it is not, submission does not mean a wife should give in to every demand of her husband. Uh, then he says, this is consistent with other parts of scripture where God's people have disobeyed some human authority and have been approved by God for doing so. Consider, for example, the Hebrew midwives in Egypt, Esther before King Xerxes, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the prophet Daniel, the apostles, and Moses' parents. The principle to be drawn from all these passages is to obey except when it would be sin to obey, which is consistent with Peter's general statement that it is for the Lord's sake 
that all our submission to lesser authority is to be given. Submission is not inconsistent with equality in Christ. We must remember that submission in regard to authority is often consistent with equality uh, with equality in importance, dignity, and honor. Jesus was subject both to his parents and to God the Father and Christians who are highly honored in God's sight are still commanded to be subject to unbelieving governmental authorities and masters. Thus the command to wives to be subject to their husbands should never be taken to imply inferior personhood or spirituality or lesser importance. Indeed, Peter affirms just the opposite. Wives are heirs with you of the gracious gift of life. I'm going to uh, link here a video by uh, Raymond Franz is in his book, In Search of Christian Freedom. Will Jehovah's Witnesses submit to JW Org's yoke of slavery or worship with their whole mind? Thanks for watching.